Hi guys, I am Ashwin, Internet Cyber Sapiens from the R25 batch. Today we are going to see the topic about business logic vulnerabilities and their impact. Ok, let's dive into the topic. First of all, what are the business logic vulnerabilities? Business logic vulnerabilities are nothing but there is a flaw in the design or the implementation of an application logic. Consider online shopping application as an example. In an online shopping application, user can be able to get 500 rupees as a discount by applying a coupon code when he order more than 1000 rupees. Here user order more than 1000 rupees and get 500 rupees as a discount by applying a coupon code. After that he removed some item from the cart. Now total order amount become lesser than 1000 but still the coupon code is applied. This is also known as a business logic vulnerability because when user order become lesser than 1000 the application must remove the coupon code from the user account but here the business logic is fails. Right now you are thinking hey this is a business logic vulnerability it is very very easy I am going to hunt down the business logic vulnerability wait 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 this is an one kind of a business logic vulnerability actually business logic vulnerabilities differ from other security bugs like XSS or SQL injection because if you want to found the business logic vulnerability, you must fully understand the application behavior, how it perform, how it works. That's why only you can be able to found the business logic vulnerability. Okay, let's move on to the types of business logic vulnerabilities. There are many types of business logic vulnerabilities are available. Here I listed some important vulnerabilities. First one is session management vulnerability due to flawed session handling. Second one is inconsistency access control and insufficient authentication check. It lead to sometime unauthorized access to the functionality or lead to an account takeover. We cover this vulnerability with real time example on the upcoming slide. And then third one is inadequate input validation. It lead to accepting the malicious input. Fourth one is order manipulation. We already aware what is order manipulation. We mostly see in that online shopping sites. And then fifth one is incomplete security check. It means uh, for example if an admin can only do a specific uh, task on the site. But this vulnerability lead to user can be able to do the same task what admin can do. This is an example of incomplete security check. Now we can see the impact of business logic vulnerabilities on the next slide. Impacts of business logic vulnerabilities. Data breaches, user privacy violations, financial losses to the organization and reputational damage to the organization. These are the impacts of business logic vulnerability. Now we get into the exciting part real world examples of business logic vulnerabilities. First example we are going to see that session management vulnerabilities related to one business logic on Pothi site. Let's visit the site. This is a Pothi site you must need to log in because it's a session management issue only. Okay our login is successful. Then I am going to access my dashboard. In the dashboard we see my lady. And then in address book, yeah, this is uh, addresses. Now this is an session management vulnerability. So for that we need to visit the cookie of the site. Where is the cookie? Most of them access the cookie by using inspect, but I use here I use my favorite tool, Cookie Quick Manager. In the Cookie Quick Manager, we must visit the Pothis. Under the Pothis, we see this is a session ID. Most of them were focused, this is a session ID. So they were focused on the session ID. We need to focus on other information also. Here we see that on user and number was same. Okay. So this is look suspicious. So I going to change the value. Now see what is happening on the site. 52, I changed the number to 51, 52, 51. Okay. And after changing, I, we must save the cookie. I save the cookie. It goes here. Okay. Then I am going to refresh the site. We got an another user account. And then we see their address book. This is address orders. Okay. This is an one example of business logic. Now we let's change back to 50 and save. Now I am going to access my dashboard. Yeah, back to my session. 
ஓகே நோ லெட் சி த பியூர்சி ஆஃப் பிஸ்னஸ் லாஜிக் பக் விச் லீட் டு ஒன் அக்கௌண்ட் டேக் ஓவர் திஸ் இஸ் த பியூர்சி ஹேர் வி கன்சிடர் அஸ்வின் பியூர்சி அஸ் அன் விக்டிம் ஆக்சுவலி விக்டிம் கிரியேட்டட் ஹிஸ் ஃபேஸ்புக் அக்கௌண்ட் வித் ஹிஸ் ஃபோன் நம்பர் ஓகே ஹி டசன் லிங்க் எனி மெயில் அட்ரெஸஸ் டு ஹிஸ் அக்கௌண்ட் and then ashwin is an attacker don't get confused between ashwin poc and ashwin ashwin poc is an victim ashwin is an attacker before take over a user account i mean victim account attacker must perform an session hijacking attack for this purposes he steal the user cookie okay this is an attack it is not an vulnerability he actually got the victim cookie before so he just tried to replace the victim cookie in his machine this is an victim cookie now he replaced his cookie with the victim cookie and then he just reload the site now the session hijacking attack performed successfully he got an victim account okay here after only real part is going to happen now let's see how we going to take over his account actually now attacker perform the attack only here after will be we going to see the what is the vulnerability okay actually in real scenario if uh, in uh, not in facebook in any other account if uh, we got a session hijack attacker only able to use the account not able to take over the account fully but in our case in the facebook there are some uh, reauthentication mechanisms are missing uh, so attacker easily able to uh, account take over the user okay now the first see the second part now the attacker try to add a email address and the account handle there are successfully able to do without entering the user password and the user is not notified about the email address being added to their account uh, in this but actually i before mentioned that uh, we created the victim account using only phone number okay uh, in in this case whenever uh, any user actual user of the account or uh, in case the session hijacking is happen if the malicious user uh, try to add the email address in case the user created i mean victim created his account with mail address he got notified uh, someone is trying to add the email address whether it's you or not please confirm um, but in our case victim doesn't created account using email address so he does not get the notified about this sensitive action uh, even though he created his account on the phone number he facebook unfortunately did not message in the phone number they only send the message in the mail id okay now let's see now he go into the attack go into the settings on the setting and go to the account center on the account center uh, he go to the personal details in the personal detail and the contact info now he going to add the mail address here the attacker is going to add his own mail address consider this is as an attacker mail address he successfully added the mail address now he waiting for the confirmation code wait okay now he got an confirmation code this is an remember this is an uh, attacker mail okay so you just copy the verification code and then now attacker successfully added his uh, mail id to the victim account but victim did not get notified in his phone number as a message and the next step is attacker going to disable the verify two step verification okay Uh, in case in the mobile in, in case in mobile account uh, you see then the facebook account center or instagram account center uh, whenever user 
do any sensitive action it uh, ask about uh, reauthentication because to for verification purpose it is whether the user is uh, adding or removing or uh, some specifications or details it must ask the reauthentication but in the web application it doesn't ask about the reauthenticate the reauthenticate mechanism is missing here we see the attacker is easily able to disable the two step verification without any reauthentication mechanism Now in the next step, attacker is able to remove the phone number of the victim, but victim didn't have aware his phone number is removed from an, uh, Facebook. This whole process is taking uh, a place the victim doesn't aware. His session is uh, hijacked and then his uh, account is going to take over. Now the Attacker just delete his phone number without any re-authentication required by the Facebook. See, the phone number is successfully deleted. Even though he changed his mail address and uh, removed the phone number, attacker did not fully take over the victim account. He just need to reset the password of the victim so that only he can be able to take our account fully. Actually, attacker got the mail address, his phone number because actually attacker had already added his mail address to the victim account so that only he received the mail. mail. Now it is the final part. Attacker going to reset the password by using the forgot password mechanism. Now attacker got the reset code and he successfully going to reset the victim password and he take over the account fully. By changing the password of an user, uh, finally attacker fully take over the account of the victim. Why we call this is as a business logic vulnerability? Because there are some security logic were missing that lead to account takeover of the user. So that only we call this as a business logic vulnerability. Uh, resulting in I got $2,000 as a bug bounty from my Facebook for reporting this bug. Identifying and mitigating business logic vulnerabilities. To identify a business logic vulnerability, it is very very crucial because we must understand how the application works, how the application behaves, so that only we can be able to identify the business logic vulnerability. Even the automated scanner also failed to identify the business logic vulnerability because most of the automated scanners are working on the basics of signature of the vulnerability. But the business logic vulnerability is occurred due to the flaw in the design of the application so that the business logic vulnerabilities are vary from application to application. So the best approach to find the business logic vulnerability is on manual testing. And then we must follow a comprehensive security approach to mitigate the vulnerability because this vulnerability cannot be fixed by using some security update. Educating developers and stakeholders. Actually, business logic vulnerability is different from other security vulnerabilities. In case attacker try to attack the organization using any other security vulnerabilities, it must trigger the security control of an organization so that organization were aware of the attack. But in the business logic vulnerability, it does not trigger any security controls. So we must educate the developers and stakeholders about the secure code practicing and we conduct a campaign about the business logic vulnerabilities. References Please read these references if you want to know more about the business logic vulnerabilities. Thank you.